nice day with snow. Um, first of all, I, my name is Petra Otrav, I work at Oregon, uh, Red Hat. And uh, I decided to slightly change the theme of presentation. It will not be straight about open associations around Fedora. Yes, I will talk about open associations around Fedora, but I will focus on two things. Uh, one is uh, authentication methods, which is new possibility how to configure authentication in uh, OpenSSH 6.2. And the second one uh, is privilege separation and uh, its integration with a serial uh, First, I will shortly introduce OpenSSH project, which I think is not necessary. Probably everybody, all of you, knows this project, uses, and knows what is it. I'll slightly introduce uh, SSH protocol, which is uh, uh, SSH protocol. Then uh, I'll switch to user authentication protocol and uh, authentication methods. Uh, in short, why we could, could use authentication methods and uh, that's why, mm, sorry. And finally, I will talk about privilege separation. Okay, so OpenSSH is a free version of SSH connectivity tool. OpenSSH encrypts all traffic um, to effectively eliminate uh, connection hij hijacking and other attacks. It also provides uh, secure tunneling, interactive sessions, and out several authentication methods and supports all SSH, SSH versions. Uh, SS, OpenSSH is uh, developed by two teams. Uh, the one team uh, strictly developing OpenSSH under OpenBSD project and doesn't include any portability things. Second team is uh, a team who works, uh, which works on uh, portability. So you can use OpenSSH on other platforms like Linux, uh, other BSDs, uh, Unixes, or so. Uh, this Second team uh, or project of this uh, project uh, name of this second team is uh, called OpenSSH Portable, and you you uh, and all releases of OpenSSH Portable is uh, with P suffix. So that's why we have now in uh, Fedora OpenSSH six point one. P1, it's, it, that means it's first portable release. Okay, SSH protocol. Uh, all SSH protocol is described in uh, RSCs. The main RSC can be SSH architect protocol archi architecture, which is RFC 4251, and this RFC defines that SSH uh, protocol is protocol for secure remote login and other secure network services and insecure network. Uh, there are three main parts of this protocol. First is the transport layer protocol, uh, which uh, provides server authentication confidentiality and integrity, and integrity with perfect for forward secrecy citation. Uh, the transport layer is typically run over TCP IP on port 22, but can be used on any other reliable streams. Second is the out user authentication protocol, which, is, uh, uh, which runs over the transport layer and provides uh, authentication of user client authentication, user client authentication to server. The, the last one is uh, the connection protocol, 
which provides uh, interactive sessions, uh, port forwarding, and other things which you can do with uh, SSH. Uh, this protocol is based on channel mul multiplexing. I will not talk about it, just short note. Uh, I will focus on uh, the user authentication protocol right now. Uh, as I said, it's, uh, it's on the top of SSH layer protocol. That means that all, all messages or requests which runs over this protocol is already encrypted by under, underlying layer, SSH transport layer. Um, yes. The whole authentication is driven by server which uh, uh, sends uh, to client available, available, available uh, authentication methods. Then the clients chose, choose, one of the, on, choose one and tries to authenticate with, method, with that method. Uh, basic methods are public key, which is only one which is required by uh, RSC. Password, host base, and none. In short, public key works on a public key authentication where a server, where a user and server signs their, or, mm. <laughs> sorry, uh, public key authentication. <laughs> okay, come on. Uh, there's special one, none authentication which is used for purpose of a client which who don't know which authentication should he use so he sends request with none and uh, server response with I will talk about it later. Here you can see typical request of uh, authentication where uh, there is a byte which says that, the request, that, this, that this request is SSH MSG user out request. Then there's a username, service name, which is always in a authentication request SSH user out. And a method name, which a client wants to use. For this request, uh, authent server responses with either success or failure. In case of failure, uh, there are two possibilities of failure. First is real failure, that authentication ends, uh, that authentication was not successful, password was wrong, K is not suitable or so. But there's other possibility that uh, authentication passed. Let's say password is right, but server needs another type of authentication from client to use. So it say, okay, pass uh, authentication failure, but, uh, but partial success is true. So, so, so it was success, but I need to, I need another authentication. Uh, well, uh, uh, this all, uh, as soon as uh, authentication is successful, server sends a message response with uh, SSH, MSG, user out success. And uh, that means that uh, server access authentication, authentication is complete, and after this response, uh, server should ignore any other uh, request of authentication. During whole authentication, server also might, might want to send some message to the client. Uh, that's, uh, that's why there's a banner message, which is uh, this format, and can be, can be configured in SSHD config using this uh, option, as you can see in this example. So, uh, Banner option takes one argument, which is file, 
with banner message and usually when you use client and login to server you will see that message from that file before your login before your password prompt so here, here is example uh, how it works uh, let's say I I've configured my SSHD to use free authentications, host-based authentication, public key authentication, and uh, password authentication. And what's, what, what's happening when I use SSH localhost? First of all, clients send requests with authentication method none. That means that uh, he don't know what to use. He doesn't know what to use. And server will respond that it's fair. Authentication, uh, response to authentication with method not should be always failure. It's, uh, it's not partial success. And client can use next methods, which are public keys, password, and host base. So client choose uh, one of it one of possible authentications, and in this case, he choose uh, public key. Since client doesn't have any private key, any private identity, which is here, he, he, he disables method and use another authentication, which is here, password. So password prompt is shown to user, and user can type his, his password. Then client, sends his request with method password and so on. And it goes until client uh, has any other possibility of authentication or until server sends uh, that uh, client path. Yes. Uh, authentication method. Uh, there were uh, since there is a, a possibility of partial success, there were a lot of requests to, to use this partial success. Uh, in uh, releases before OpenSSH 6.2, which is not released yet, but uh, in a form days, there was no, no possibility to enforce user to use more than one one uh, authentication. So if you, if you like user to use, let's say, two-factor authentication, like he has public key and also he has to know password, it wasn't possible with uh, former, former versions of OpenSSH. Uh, with upstream version of OpenSSH 6.2, there will be a new method, authentication method, which provides multi-factor authentication. And you can specify multiple methods which are enforced for user to use. Uh, this feature is also included already in RHEL 6.3, but, but with uh, another, <laughs> another option name in RHEL 6.3, it's required authentication too. In Fedora 17, it's also required authentication too. And, but in Fedora 18, there's already backported from development three um, authentication method. Uh, it's unfortunate, but uh, the development of this feature was really long, and upstream uh, or bug should bug looked like sometimes dead. There was no move, and we need to move this uh, feature forward. So we decided to uh, use patch from upstream Bugzilla, which used required authentication, back, use it in RHEL and Fedora. And after some time, uh, upstream maintainers came with, uh, with their solution based on original patch, but with another name. Uh, Frankly, their, their, uh, their solution is better and provides more, more, uh, provides more. <coughs> okay, thank you. So here's example, how can it work? Uh, in authentication methods, 
takes a string of parameters where, uh, or um, take, as an argument, takes method list, which is uh, di this divided by uh, commands, but also can be divided by uh, spaces. Uh, that means that uh, I can I can set uh, multiple required methods, my, my multiple sets of required methods. Um, in other words, in this example, uh, this means that client pass public key and password authentication or pass password and host base authentication. So if client has public key and no password, he can log in. Or if client doesn't have public key but knows password and is in a, let's say, a secured network or network where we know each, where host knows each other, then it's, it's enough to use password and uh, host-based authentication. Uh, an example of logs, again, it's uh, uh, when client uses command SSH, he gets methods which he, which he can use, public key and password. It's always first methods in list. So he decided if he used public key or password. In this case, client doesn't have any, any private key, any private identity, so he decided to choose password. After he typed password and pass, sent password request, he gets message that uh, response, uh, he gets response that uh, authentication was failed, but with partial success, sorry, but with partial success. So, and, with this response, he gets another list where he, he said, he, he's being said that uh, he can use public key again first and host base. And since he already know that he can't use public key, he tried to use host base authentication, but he's not configured to host base. So he say permission, it's, he can't use host base, it's not configured. It's not secure, uh, it's not uh, con confined, not confined, it's not con confident. And authentication fails. As, as, so. Is it all your measures only for the, how, how do you ever send the, uh, the proposal for, for the authentication <coughs> method? But you can, if, if, he, if for example, the client was uh, some, something different than uh, the public key method for uh, authentication. He could try first password and then uh, then public key, and it would succeed. He could try. Yeah. Uh, because uh, I, see, I see that. Uh, I think, uh, I believe that the authentication protocol allows uh, to, uh, uh, no. Uh, it's that uh, there's no connection between server response and uh, client's request. So if server responds that you can use methods, uh, public key and password, and client... Is it, there is the, the debug one authentication that, that uh, can continue, and that's, for, uh, that's coming from server, I think. This message is coming from server, yeah. yes. So, so but client can use anything from that. Uh, that's all for authentication methods. Uh, are there any questions for this part? Uh, can I just correct me? There isn't a background compatibility. So we are running both SSH client availability connect to a machine that runs multiple authentication. I'm sorry, I don't. Uh, uh, I was just asking if authentication methods are backward compatible. If I'm running both SSH client and the server. It, it does not affect the client at all. Yes, uh, the question was is if it's. Uh, Authentication methods is backward compatible with uh, old clients. Uh, this is server server feature. It doesn't uh, affect any client. It uh, authentication for client, the authentication is still same. Uh, 
Uh, maybe there could be clients that they, that they can't cope with uh, with uh, what server, but they would basically be uh, non-compliant with the protocol, with the RFP. Uh, yes, the uh, question was if it's possible hmm. uh, to configure, uh, I, would, I will rephrase it, if it's possible to use uh, authentication methods in match block or if it's only uh, in global scope. Yes, it's possible. You can use, you can use authentication methods in uh, global scope and also in the match block, so you can use match user or match group, these, these users use public key authentication passwords, and in global scope, everybody has to use, I don't know, passwords. As a method flaggable, can you create your own method on the client and server and give it a name and use it? Um, uh, question. Was, uh, if these authentication methods are pluggable or, or yeah, in general methods if are pluggable. Because this, this authentication methods option is using only methods which are already in uh, OpenSSH. Right, so can I develop my own new method for I believe you can. Uh, uh, it's it's not like uh, you can't use plugin. You should uh, you you would need to write your code, recompile your project, open SSC server and client. Uh, 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 protocols say that uh, method name is just string. You can you can extend it with your name. Use uh, name. Uh, that'd be nice. Uh, name at uh, your domain, let's say, and you will provide your own method name. You can do this. this. But do you have to do it inside the code base of the OpenSSH, or you can? Yes, yes, yes. You, you need to do it inside of code of OpenSSH. There's no, I, I think there's no, no plugin. Plug there is no plugin interface. Okay. Plugin interface, yes. Uh, well, there are methods that uh, allow uh, certain amount of pluggability. It's a GSS API method uh, where you could have probably the different implementation than, Ker than Kerberos. And uh, there is uh, the uh, keyboard interactive that uses PAN. Uh, and uh, for textual conversation, you can use this and you can do anything basically. So for most, for example, for, for the uh, uh, one-time passwords, uh, the, the keyboard interactive with PAN uh, can be used. And these are, these are already implemented in, in I know. Yeah. I know that they are. I, I wonder whether the project is creating a capability to do it simply. Basically, the philosophy of uh, OpenSSH project is not to make too much pluggability because it, uh, it brings uh, security weaknesses. <laughs> OK. okay. I, I agree with them. OK, <laughs> let's continue. <laughs> uh, 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 second part of this presentation should be about privilege separation. Uh, during authentication and also during uh, the connection protocol phase where we starting interactive session, there are, there are places where uh, process needs super user privileges or special privileges. And run a process with super user privileges which, uh, with, which communicates straight to network or which does a lot of other things, may tend to errors or some privilege escalation. So that's why it was uh, adapted privilege, escalation, privilege separation. Uh, that's why it was implemented privilege separation to open SSH. Uh, privilege separation, uh, or goal of privilege separation. Goal of privilege separation is to reduce of amount of code with special, special privileges. It's achieved with uh, splitting application into two parts. 
or into parts. Uh, one part is uh, privileged, usually called monitor, and other parts uh, are default privileges and they are called slaves. Uh, slaves usually ask monitor to perform operation which needs special privileges. Uh, they usually ask, they usually use uh, socket pair which is created before unprivileged child is created and communicates via this, this uh, socket. Um, operation uh, or a request, set of requests or permitted actions uh, changes during, uh, during the whole phase uh, or during the whole session depending on, on where we currently are, if it's authentication phase or where we are in a connection phase or... So. And uh, last note that number of privileged operations is usually small, like uh, two or three operations. So in privilege separation, there are usually two phases, or in OpenSSH, there are two phases. One phase is uh, pre-authentication phase, which uh, is uh, before user is authenticated. So user is not authenticated. Slave shouldn't or must not have any rights to access file system <coughs> or to create processes. Uh, UID of a slave process in OpenSSH open is changed to SSHD and its root file, root directory is changed to var empty SSH. Uh, so he shouldn't be able to read anything on file system, uh, only this empty directory. Uh, set of privilege requests in this, in this phase is K exchange is because unprivileged uh, child still communicates with client and they can uh, during during session K can be changed or it changed again. Uh, second request is user validation where it's on the beginning of authentication phase or authentication protocol where in, with the first request server. Uh, validate if user is uh, validate. And if it's not, it should always uh, response failed on any request, every request. And uh, another privilege request is authentication. Uh, that's why uh, unprivileged child uh, can't read ETC shadow or can't uh, do any other things needed for authentication. That's why this authentication request is our privilege. As an example, uh, here is a list of processes, how it works in uh, Linux when you use PS, AX, F, AX, F. There will, there's another process here which is not shown, uh, which is main daemon. Main daemon forks Privilege, privilege child monitor, and this monitor forks, forks another child unprivileged. Then, uh, with SSHD UID, which uh, and call him net, as it's usually used for communication over network. Second phase of uh, privilege separation is post authentication. In this phase, the user is successfully authenticated. Uh, so the slave has its privileges, has its uh, UID. And uh, in this phase, uh, there are privileges, privilege requests. Again, K exchange, as K can exchange during the <laughs> session. And pseudo terminal creation. It's uh, needed for uh, interactive sessions. As you can see, uh, the list of processes changed. Now it's here, username, and here's uh, 
in the, in the name of process is uh, pseudo terminal instead of net. Uh, this process is uh, is other than this process. The, this uh, when my SSH client connects to the to the server, which of those processes is is my client connected to? Is it the one with the root privilege or the the root priv, or is it the? One uh, it's uh, the question was uh, to which process is connected to your client on the server? Is it, if it is uh, the unprivileged one or privileged one? Um, answer is on this uh, picture. Okay. <laughs> uh, client is connected always to unprivileged one. Unprivileged one can do sort of uh, operation which is for which he don't need he doesn't need uh, per, uh, special privileges like uh, sending data, receiving data, opening, opening uh, ports for port forwarding or so. So when he needs, uh, I will describe this picture. <laughs> uh, so uh, it's usual rundown, uh, sorry. Uh, SSH daemon usually listen on port 22 and when network connection comes, he forks first child privileged with, run, uh, with, it, with his own privileges, which, which is called monitor. And this, this process forks, first creates socket pair, then forks itself, so the fork process in, inherited it, this socket pair and can com communicate, these two processes can communicate via the socket. And this new process uh, is taken off privileges. So as it's written here, fork unprivileged child, that means that uh, child is forked and his UID is changed and GID is changed and root is changed and that's in this sentence, fork unprivileged child. This unprivileged child do all network processing. So he accepts connection, he sends uh, a banner of, uh, of server, he receives banner of client, he, he communicates, communicates with client. When the authentication is over, uh, unprivileged child exports its, its state to back to monitor because we can't change process uh, or its process UID can't, in Linux can't change its privileges during or its UID during, during lifetime. So it has to export its state to monitor. Monitor then again fork child. This time it's not unprivileged in meaning like that it's SSHD UID, but it's, this time it's a user UID. And this user user process do all all the other all the next things works with network data sends get re requests from user so uh, yes uh, in um, This privilege uh, separation is only done on, on changing UID or on changing root. There's new possibility of uh, privilege separation in OpenSSH 5.9, which is called Sandbox. The Sandbox adds other or other or other, other limitation to, to unprivileged process. Uh, there's two types of sandboxes which can be used in a federal Linux uh, or we use in Fedora rlimit sandbox which uses uh, set rlimit to set limits of uh, process and pretty child that he wouldn't be able to create any file to create any process and file size of uh, uh, is set to zero. Another 
another filter is second filter, which uses a new feature of kernel 3.7, which is called, it's called SECOM. Uh, and you can, you can see, you can watch what this filter do using this, this command. Uh, this filter isn't used in Fedora uh, since it wasn't uh, possible to compile or to build this, uh, this filter on systems which doesn't support runtime second. As you know, uh, Koji build systems run on uh, older systems than uh, uh, the newest Fedora Rawhide, so it wasn't possible to use. And in my testing, testing an environment with this filter, it doesn't even work because Unprivileged Child do, do, does something with NetSocket which is not allowed with this filter. So this filter is for Fedora right now too, too restrictive to, use, to be used. Uh, here's example, okay. Uh, another, another, uh, another feature of privilege separation in Fedora is integrating SE Linux. In uh, old Fedoras, uh, like Fedora 16, an unprivileged user, unprivileged process was run with uh, SSHD context. That means that uh, all, all operation from point of view as, of SE Linux, which can do SSHD, can also do unprivileged process. It's, uh, it means that, uh, if I switch, that if you want to uh, use SSH forwarding or SSH remote port forwarding, you, by default, I believe by default, you are not, you are not allowed to. You should allow SSHD to, for, to use forward port with this, with this uh, boolean. And it was even needed for root which run under unconfined domain. So even root can't use SSH minus R if uh, this, this, uh, this boolean wasn't, wasn't on. Uh, it's, it's, it was changed based on idea and page uh, from Dan Walsh that uh, we can use we can use users uh, as in Linux context also on unprivileged child. So as you can see, there's uh, unprivileged child with already which has already my context con confined users to view, and now. Uh, if I right now, I'm right now sure that stuff you can open port. Uh, I believe by default, no, by default, no. Right now, with Fedora 18, if I have confined user and I'm, and I try SSH minus R, <laughs> SSH minus R, then uh, I wouldn't be able to do, but if I do it with unconfined user or unconfined root, there's no no uh, no problem with it, no restriction. Thanks to thanks to this uh, privilege separation also on users user level. Um, there is some links uh, where you can see specs of uh, SSH protocol. Uh, where you can download SSH portable, when you can uh, find uh, talk about privilege separation and other information you can find in uh, MAN pages. Thank you. Uh, questions? Okay. Uh -huh. 
uh, was it question? <laughs> uh, it, it was probably known that uh, also uh, the first mm -hmm. average child net, uh, which uh, is run is SSH UID should also also change, be, should be run with change context. Is it okay? To change context as as same same as this, so we can probably use some uh, I don't know SSHD slave context or thank you question other for what yes uh, question was if this uh, new uh, well, if this apply also to rel6 yes from uh, this uh, privilege separation on uh, <coughs> or a C linux privilege separation is also in uh, rel6 free okay thank you for listening and enjoy next talks <laughs>